In a previous video, I explained to you guys how important it was to get an MRI before your prostate biopsy because an MRI can actually find areas of cancer in the prostate. But there's actually more information we can get from an MRI and we can use that MRI to help select which kind of prostate biopsy technique we want to use in order to maximize the cancer detection rates while minimizing the side effects. And this is the paper I literally just published this weekend, so I'm very excited about it and I want to share the details because I think it's very valuable for you in both making sure you get the best care you can and making sure that your doctor is up to date with the most common medicine. So as I explained in the previous video, we can use MRIs to find areas within the prostate that are cancerous and then try to target our biopsies to that area. But as you may also remember, these biopsies that are MRI targeted can actually miss some significant cancers. So we have recommended that all patients undergo an MRI targeted biopsy and a traditional grid based biopsy at the same time. This has been interesting because many people have adopted this, but also many doctors have not. And there's a lot of reasons why they haven't. Some doctors just don't know how to do MRI interpretation or MRI targeted biopsy yet. That's quite common. Some uh, are skeptical about the benefit, and we went over that in a previous video about the benefit. But the other reason is that when you subject patients to the MRI targeted biopsy and the systematic biopsy at the same time, the number of biopsy cores a person gets goes up a lot. So we know that the standard sort of grid-based uh, ultrasound guided biopsy takes 12 biopsies of the prostate. And that's a lot, and the more biopsies you take, the more risk you're going to have of bleeding, probably higher risk of infection. But what we find is, uh, if we add the MRI-targeted biopsies, which is anywhere from like 2 to 10 more biopsies, depending on how many MRI targets you have within the prostate, now you're actually getting close to sometimes 20 biopsies in a single person. And that's kind of a lot of intervention. And with all that intervention, the risks of side effects could potentially go up. So some people have not adopted the strategy. So what we're trying to do now is we did a sub-analysis of a paper that we published uh, last year in the New England Journal of Medicine. So what we tried to do is we tried to see if we could use the MRI findings or other findings to try and personalize our biopsy strategy to an individual based on the findings we found on their MRI. And actually it turns out we can, and that was the topic of this paper that we just published in European Urology Oncology. And we're going to discuss that today. So before we can kind of get into too much detail, you first need to understand how radiologists interpret prostate MRIs. So I'm going to put up an image right now so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. But when a radiologist looks at a prostate MRI, they'll see an image like this of a prostate and then they'll find a lesion within the prostate. Based on how concerning that lesion is, they'll give it a score from one to five. A score of one meaning essentially that the prostate looks normal, a score of five meaning it's very likely that the lesion that they've identified is cancer. And so when you get a prostate biopsy, the first thing that you'll get usually in the report is what's called a PIRAD score, or this is your score from one to five. The score of one to five will tell you how concerned the radiologist is for prostate cancer in your prostate MRI. Again, like we said, five is high risk, one is low risk. And what people wanna know is what is the risk of cancer based on the PIRAD score? And this is actually kind of new. In our paper, we've published what the cancer detection rates are based on using that combined prostate biopsy technique, where you use the MRI target biopsy and the systematic biopsy at the same time, or that uh, systematic also means sort of the grid-based biopsy. So this kind of hasn't been published before, and this is the first time we published this to show by a person's PIRAD score or their MRI finding risk, risk category, what the likelihood of cancer is based on the type of biopsy technique you take. So when we look at it, we see that uh, for PIRADS 5 men, this is the highest risk group, 95% of men actually have uh, prostate cancer found on their biopsy. So if you have a PIRADS 5, they're definitely going to find something. The question is how high risk it's going to be. For men with a PIRADS 4 lesion, 62% have cancer. For men with a PIRADS 3 lesion, about 50% are found to have cancer. And men with PIRADS 2 lesions, 38% are found to have prostate cancer. Now remember, we talked about this in a pre previous video that not all prostate cancer is lethal. In fact, not all prostate cancer has the potential to even metastasize or spread to other parts of the body. So prostate cancer is also given a five point score, one being the lowest risk, five being the highest risk. And we call these grade groups. So it goes from grade group one to grade group five. I have a previous video on this. It's actually very important to know. Um, we've used Gleason scores in the past, but more modern uh, you know, studies are now using something called grade groups. It's a little bit simpler actually. Uh, and you can see my previous video on grade groups and understanding Gleason scores and grade groups. It should be pretty easy to find on my channel. Um, 
Anyway, the reason I bring that up is because gray group 1 prostate cancer almost never spreads. It has very little chance of, uh, almost no chance of killing you actually. So we usually do not treat gray group 1 cancer. We just watch it because the risk of treatment is, you know, you're risking contents, you risk side effects, you risk erectile dysfunction if you radiate or remove the prostate. Even if you do high food, there's still some risk. So we usually just watch those people. However, the guys with grade group 3, 4, 5 cancer, they pretty much ubiquitously need some, sort of, some form of treatment. And then the men in grade group 2 cancer, that's actually kind of a debate. Some of us think it's reasonable to watch those people, some of us think it's not, but we don't have robust enough data yet to routinely recommend surveillance in people with grade group 2 cancer. Part of the reason being that our biopsies have been historically very inaccurate, and because of the research that I'm sharing with you now, our biopsies are actually far more accurate and we have more certainty. And I expect in the coming decades that grade group 2 cancer might become increasingly considered for active surveillance, but we aren't there yet. So I bring this caveat up because those numbers I told you for the risk of cancer detection based on your grade group includes grade group 1 cancer. And as we just discussed, these grade group 1 cancer, also called Gleason 6, very unlikely to kill you. So <clears throat> I think it's more important that people know based on their MRI findings, what's their risk of having grade group two or higher cancer. So let's go through those numbers. So for men with pyrides five cancer, or sorry, pyrides five MRI lesions, they have around an 83% chance of having a uh, grade group two or higher prostate cancer. For pyrides four patients, 43% risk for pyrides 3 patients, 22% risk, and pyrides 2 patients, 18% risk. Now, you can look at these tables and you can pull these out of these tables by, by uh, pausing, or I'm also going to put a link to this publication in the descriptions. So if you want to read this study we published and really get the nitty gritty and sort of understand the details, I'm going to make it available for you by clicking the link below. Okay, so now you kind of know, based on your PIRAD score, what your risk of having cancer is, but we can actually go a step further and we can use your PIRAD score or your prostate MRI score to not only know your risk of cancer detection, but to start to select better biopsy methods based on your um, PIRAD score. So what we found actually is that for men who had uh, PIRADS 5 lesions, almost all of those cancers were detected by MRI targeted biopsy meaning that grid-based 12-core biopsies really kind of didn't find many cancers. Around 2% of cancers were found that way. And none of those were substantially higher risk than those found by the MRI-targeted biopsy. So based on that, we told people in the study that we do not recommend people with PIRADS-5 uh, MRIs to undergo the traditional 12-core systematic grid-based biopsies. It's just not worth it for you. It's not worth the risk. Now, for men with PIRADS4 lesions, however, and PIRADS3 lesions, we found that around 7 to 8% more cancer detection rate was found by adding the systematic biopsy to the MRI targeted biopsy. This means that 8% more of these potentially dangerous cancers, these grade group 2 or higher cancers, were actually found by using the um, systematic biopsy in addition to the MRI targeted biopsy. And this is big. So this means that the paper we published last year recommending that anyone with an MRI visible lesion undergo both the MRI targeted biopsy and the grid-based biopsy was great, but now we can actually select and show that that benefit was really actually only seen in a very small group of people. And that small group of people was the men with the PIRADS3 and PIRADS4 lesions. The men with the PIRADS5 lesions actually did not get a benefit from the addition of the systematic biopsy that was very substantial. So now we're starting to personalize our care, right? So we're saying that the men with the PIRADS 3 and 4, these are the guys who really get benefit from having the traditional 12-core biopsies, and they get benefit from the systematic biopsies, or sorry, from the MRI-targeted biopsies. So they're getting the traditional 12-core ultrasound-guided biopsies and the MRI-targeted biopsies. And for them, you know, you're getting benefit, you're getting much better diagnosis, so that if you get diagnosed, for example, with grade group 1 disease, you are now very confident that there is a very low risk, uh, there's a very low risk that there's actually worse cancer in your prostate, and you're actually more comfortable doing surveillance. However, if you do, let's say, only an MRI targeted biopsy in a man with a PIRADS3 cancer, there's around an 8% chance that you actually harbor worse cancer than we suspected, 
right? So you are actually left with a little bit of uncertainty and that might lead you to either entertain more aggressive treatments or it might lead to risk of, um, of anxiety or uncertainty. I think it's better to get sort of an optimized biopsy once and have some certainty and then make a decision as opposed to having so much uncertainty about what you're dealing with. The final group that we tested was these PIRATS2 men. Now, PIRATS2 is the uh, MRI score that's given to the men who have just a slight abnormality in the prostate. And based on the findings, the radiologist is saying, hey, there might be something here, but I'm not certain. So these men, it turns out, actually got very little cancer detection by using MRI targeted biopsy, like to the point where it was really only adding a few percent additional detection. And for those men, doing MRI targeted biopsy actually wasn't that useful. So the, the interesting thing is for Pirates 2, most doctors are actually not performing a biopsy at all. And that's because we found that MRI targeted biopsies do really poorly in these groups. But there haven't been good studies looking at doing the traditional 12 um, evenly spaced biopsies in the Pirates 2 group. And when we look at that in our study, we found that about one in five men, 17.5% or so, had potentially or had actually potentially dangerous cancer in their prostate. So this is actually a big surprise. We expected these men would have a very low risk of having prostate cancer. But in reality, uh, almost one in five of these men, one, one in five to one in six of these men actually had some prostate cancer. So, you know, if you're found to have a Pyrides 2 lesion, you might want to discuss with your doctor whether or not they think a prostate biopsy is useful. In strange situations like that, using other metrics like PSA density may actually be very helpful in determining whether or not uh, you should do a prostate biopsy or not. So, you know, you take this study in context and we take it as a whole. Uh, I think that the literature over the last few years has shown that MRI targeted biopsy is better than systematic biopsy, but actually if you do both together, you really are getting uh, better cancer detection rates and more accuracy. But it turns out that that benefit is really only in the PIRATS 3 and 4 group. Uh, essentially, we can start to uh, personalize our biopsy strategy based on what your MRI findings are. So in summary, this is what we published in our paper that for PIRATS 5 men, we recommend they undergo MRI targeted biopsy only. For PIRATS 3 and 4 men, we recommend they, go, uh, they undergo a combination of the MRI targeted and the systematic biopsy. And then for the PIRATS 2 men, we recommended that they undergo no MRI targeted biopsy and only systematic biopsy if a biopsy was indicated at all. Uh, but I do feel that knowing this in general will be very helpful in making sure that you get the best biopsy strategy out there and that you have confidence that your biopsy is accurate and correct. Um, I'm also just generally very excited to share this because this is new data that came out of our group and I'm very excited to get the word out so that people can make sure that they get the best care they can. With prostate cancer, the most important thing in avoiding overtreatment is making sure that your diagnosis is highly accurate and that there is a very low risk that we miss something significant. And that's really what happened a lot in the 80s and 90s. So we got a lot of this, a lot of people diagnosed by these traditional grid-based biopsies, but we were really unsure if they were accurate or not. In fact, we knew that 30 to 40% of the time they were wrong. So that meant a lot of people got overtreatment because the doctor just wasn't sure that there wasn't worse cancer lying in the prostate. They'd want to risk having their cancer, their patient's cancer spread. But now we're entering a new era. And by using these biopsy strategies, we have more certainty about what your diagnosis is and the risk of there being upgrading or can worse cancer than we suspect has gone down to a quarter of what it was before, or actually less than a quarter of what it was before, to the point where we can actually pretty safely tell people, hey, what we found in your biopsy is extremely likely to be similar in risk to what we find on your surgery if you choose to go to surgery. And that, while it seems simple, is huge because it means that you are not going to get over treatment like we used to see in the past. So like always, I hope this was very helpful for you. I mean, obviously everyone's situation is different and you should speak with a doctor to get all of the details of your case uh, understood. But I wanted to share the literature with you so that you can gain some insight. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, subscribe, and I look forward to sharing some more videos with you soon. Next video will probably be about transperineal prostate biopsy versus transrectal biopsies, the costs and benefits of those. So see you soon. Now, as many of you know, I make these videos in my nights and weekends. The goal is really to help people have better information so that they get good treatment.
because you know sometimes there isn't good treatment out there. But honestly, my practice is getting very busy uh, in terms of clinical practice, and I could use some help. If anyone wants to contribute, whether you have skills in video editing, logo design, PowerPoint creation, or you're a researcher who wants to help collect data, I uh, would love to have your help. Please go to cancerbetter.com and click on the Contact Us link to um, basically contribute. Thanks. The topics discussed in this video are for educational purposes only and should not be used to make medical decisions. Every individual has unique circumstances which will influence their medical care and the application of scientific literature should be interpreted within the context of your general health. Please consult a physician before making any clinical decisions.